to Caesar or no but he proceeded their craftiness and said unto them why tempted ye me show me a penny who image and subscription have it they answered and said Caesar and he said unto them render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's and unto God the things which be God amen Amen. Heavenly Father, come to you once more and again with our heads and humble hearts. Just asking you to bless us this morning, Father. We ask that you bless us because you gave us the ability to wake up this morning and to be in our right mind, Father. And while we're going to ask you to bless Reverend Snowden and Reverend Wiley and the entire family this morning, Father. Reach out to them. Let them give us the word you want the word, Father. And Father, we ask that you bless all the sick and afflicted this morning, Father. Bless all the people in prisons this morning, Father. Father, let them know that you are God and that you can free them without freeing their bodies, Father. And Father, we ask that you bless all the military this morning, Father. We know this is military week, and we ask you to bless them especially, Father. These blessings and all of the blessings we ask in the Son of Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Return to return to the responsible reading. The responsible reading will be Proverbs 10, 19 to 25. It's in the program. Responsible reading goes that thus sin is not ended by multiplying words, but the prudent holds their tongue. Congregation. The time of the righteous is the choice of the but the heart of the wicked is the will of the land. The lips of the righteous nourish many, but fools die for lack of sense. Congregation. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth, but our anger is all the way. A fool finds pleasure in wicked scheme, but a person of understanding delights in wisdom. Congregation. What, what the wicked is great the Lord will take to him. What the righteous desire will be greater. All when the storm has slipped by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous is in our forever. May the preceded, may the have a blessing to the reading of the word.
church say amen and glory to God. Amen. Amen. Once again, every praise is to our God. If you remember that and live by that, we'll all be in a better place. Um, as far as announcements, um, remember Bible study has resumed. It will be on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. So if you missed last session, please try to attend this next session if you're able to. Um, once again, a reminder, um, if you or anyone you know is in need of a food bank or are interested in visiting a food bank, please get with Miss Pat. Um, she knows a few locations. If that's something that you're interested in or know someone who may need it, please don't be too proud or too shy to ask. We all need help, and that is okay. Um, as far as our deacons, the deacon board and, the, and our men of the church, the Deacon Board and the Men Group will start their meetings next, is it next week or after Thanksgiving? After Thanksgiving. So if you're interested, please get with Deacon Cooper um, after service to discuss a time on a, on a location. Um, if that's something you're interested in, and I'm in the men's group um, and our deacons, you guys already been discussing it. So <laughs> as far as you guys' is meeting and training and everything like that. Um, as far as everything going on with our building, it's still kind of up in the air. Um, we're not sure what's going on, but as of right now, we're still here. We're still continuing to ask for prayer um, so that God can lead us to um, where he wants us to be as far as our church home so that we can continue to grow. I don't see any <coughs> visitors. Um, please remember if you need to um, update anyone on the prayer list or briefment or the list for briefment, please let me know as soon as possible so I can make sure that that's updated. Um, with that being said, please continue to pray for our pastor and family, Reverend Wiley and family, Sister Flo and family, Michael Carden, Robert Cooper and family, Courtney Wormwood, Olga Ortiz, William Nichols, Willie Ely, Eric Smith, the Wilson and Lewis family, Carl Peterson, Denise Tyler, Rutia Curry and family, please continue to pray for our church and its members. Please continue to pray for us as a city, our state, the country, and the rest of the world as we continue to uh, battle through everything that um, is happening and going on with us, not only just with the pandemic, but everything else that's going on. And with that being said, I'll get you over to our pastor, Carl M. Snowden Sr. Good morning, church. Good morning. good morning. Once again, it's good to be in the house of Lord one more time. Amen. This morning, uh, I was talking uh, to the seven pastors down in Texas, and one of them was last week was having problems with this church, and I found out that. Uh, we're talking about closing up this church with maybe two or three people out there. And he's trying to get out and get people to come in and in community. But I said that to say sometimes, you know, you think we are looking for a building or trying to figure out you think you have problems. People have problems worse than you. And, uh, and everything. And so um so listen, prayers for him, and maybe down the line, uh, I'm thinking about maybe that we can see if uh, he need help, if he need help with men or something down there for a couple months or something that we can try to assist him, you know, because we get blessings through helping others, Amen. especially when you're helping someone within the Lord. So right now, Nothing else going on. I just came back from a little tired from other things that were going on with me. But and after the funeral yesterday, I guess I might have ate too much. They had a boy made a look like a smuggler's board with so much food in there. <laughs> and, and I thought I was being all right. I said, I'll get a little of this and a little of that. And I looked up, I had a mountain of a plate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the only lady that's 
uh, we've been praying for her. Uh, that was here with her mother and her brother-in-law, uh, I mean her uh, fiance and her, and her mother-in-law. She's uh, recuperating and right now, and she's, she didn't say when she'll be back, but you know, she's happy because God has blessed her. And the others that God is working with, and like I tell people, now I learn to say, you know, when people are sick, we can pray for them, pray for them. Because you can pray for them continuously until God calls them home. David said about the, I, I, I like to use that example. David, when David prayed for his son, Bathsheba, and uh, he heard the servants Whispering, he said, Is the little boy dead? And uh, they said, Yes. He had been fasting and praying and everything. He got up, washed up, and went to the shower and ate and everything. But well, why did you pray for him? When, when, when he was alive, you was trying to pray and fast, and now you get up, he dead, and get up and eat. and and take a shower and everything, and he said, I can't do nothing for him now, because he's gone. But I can get ready to go to be with him. And when a person is dead, they did. You can't do nothing for him. Like at that funeral yesterday, the young girl, I think she's in her thirty or forty. And she died of a kidney failure. And a lot of people say, well, we didn't have time to get yourself prepared. You know how you get prepared for a funeral or something? Do something for them when they're alive. Visit, talk to them when they're alive. All right. So when, when anything happens, when you know you done did your work. Like a lot of people say, give them our roses while I can smell them. Right. I'm always there. But, you know, sometimes it ain't the idea of giving them roses, but doing things to <coughs> appreciate. Doing them to know that you're there. Because you might be in a position one day that you need some help or need somebody to do something for you. But I'm not going to say too much. And All right. All right. All right. Because we got Broadway Joe taking the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, I see him over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Let me get ready. <laughs> <laughs> and them kids play with each other, but you know he got something to say. And everybody, you know, but uh, you know. He was one of them dying comedians. Died to get there, but couldn't live it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, if you would, stand for prayer. And, uh, <coughs> Eternal Father, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts and our minds. We come thanking you for allowing us another day, Father. Taking us forth to open up the bread of life and just to see what you have for us, Father. We realize we couldn't have did it without you, Father. Regardless of who was up or who we was down, we needed you, Father. And we ask you to continue changing our lives and making us be a better person, that our light might shine, that others may see through us and want a part of what you can give them, Father. Help us reach out to others. Help us be there and do the things that might be needed, Father. We need you, Father. We praise you. We want to be whatever, what you would have us to do. 
let us go out your ways and do what we can. We pray for the military. We pray for the government. We pray for those who are sick and shed in. We pray for those in the hospital. We pray for those who are on the shelter. There's so many situations and circumstances that go on, Father, that we don't have the time of the day to, to just continue to ask, Father. We, we, we need our own problems and things, but yet we still need to reach out to others, Father. We still need to ask for blessings for others, Father. Sometimes we need to sit back and not think about what we're going through, but think about somebody lesser uh, have greater problems, Father. We ask you to touch hearts and minds today. Give us a message today, Father. And be able to just talk all week about what you've done and what's been said about you, Father. Create a new mess in us, Father. Search our hearts and our minds. Let us really be what you would have us to be, Father. Let us not play church, but be a church, Father. Let us not thank just because we come on Sunday morning that we done paid our dues. That to be a true church member and be a true worker, there's time when you don't feel like coming through the week or time when you don't feel like coming to Sunday school or Bible study or different programs that the church are uh, having the child to put out to help increase the knowledge and understanding of you that we can bring in and be witness to what you can do. We ask you these things and all things. In the Son of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, Father God, as we come and lift this offering to you, Father. We ask you to bless this offering and let us use it for the lifting up your kingdom, Father. Let us be able to reach out and help someone and do something. Touch us in ways that we can and we will, Father. We need you now and we just want to say thank you for who you are. Thank you for another day. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to give us, we don't even give you 1% of what you gave us through a lifetime. Father, um, and, and the things that you allowed us to enjoy and have, Father, we thank you for this. And now we present our tithes and offerings to you, Father. In your son name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
That's when your problems start, when you got money. <laughs> as long as you ain't got no money, you ain't got to worry about nobody. If somebody come out to see you, you know, you know who like you and who don't like you. <laughs> but they sure don't like you for your money. <laughs> when you don't have any. But then now you got a whole bunch of people coming by your house and you wonder why are they coming? Do they come because they want to see me? Or they want to come and see how, how well I'm doing? Or how bad I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Especially your kids. They come out, Mom, you, uh, you, you leaving us yet? <laughs> I thought the doctor said that you can have it a few more months. <laughs> that was last year. <laughs> about holding on. <laughs> we come out to see what was wrong with you. <laughs> there, was a, there was a pilot that I worked with. He made the agreement with his wife. He said that I'm going to pay you matrimony. I'm going to pay you matrimony for five years. After seven years, he took her back to court. <laughs> and the judge said, "Well, what is it that you want?" He said. I want her to fulfill her part of the contract. She told me she wasn't going to live for five years. That was seven years ago. I want to be rich. When I, was, when I was a young man coming up, I said, I want to make $65,000 by the time I'm 35. So 35 is coming and gone. I never made $65,000 a year. I made 50. I never made 65. Because I thought that once I got out of my home, that to, to make money, to, to be rich, was going to be easy. But the hardest thing in the world is to work for somebody else and think you're going to get rich. You'll make them rich long before you become rich. Because you're not going to work no ordinary job and become rich unless you take it from somebody else. Hmm. See, that's what people don't realize is just because you're rich that you did it the old-fashioned way. You earned it. No. You stole it. Huh. Look at these big companies. They're stealing every day. What, what, what are they stealing? Your wages. They steal them every day. They think nothing of it. But they're stealing your wages. They said things like bonus. Bonus means somebody didn't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> bonus. <laughs> How can you give somebody the money I don't work for and tell them it's a bonus? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to be rich. Mm. You want to be rich in what? Mm. I can tell you if, if you if you want to be rich, if you if you've gone through what I've gone through this past two years. You want to be rich in your health. Forget about the money. You can't spend no money laying on your laying on your back in bed. That's right. But I tell you what, it does give you a chance to do to look up and talk to the Lord. I want to be rich. You see, I want to be rich in children. I thank God for my children, as bad as they are. <laughs> They're mine. And the guy asked me one time, he said, is that your daughter? I said, it most certainly is. <laughs> because you, you know she mine in her actions. <laughs> because that's my girl. She would do what daddy would do. <laughs> so that's my girl. I'm not going to deny her because she's bad. <laughs> I was bad too until I could until I could be bad no more. My wife told me them them days were over. <laughs> <laughs> so my man will pack it in, come come on home. <laughs> and and they, they say things like, Don't make me come get you. Because <laughs> <laughs> if they do, you wish you had to come on home on your own. <laughs> I want to be rich. I want to be rich and educated. I want to be able to talk like I know what I'm talking about and don't know nothing. 
I want to be rich. I, I, I want to be rich in friends who I know love me because of me. With all my flaws and mistakes that I've made, they still found a way to say, hey, you're still my friend. Those are two friends. I want to be rich. You see, David was a ladies' man. And the Bible says that David was a ladies' man because he always had a beautiful woman with him in bed at night. But David got to be filthy rich. And the Bible says that he slept with a virgin that had found one among the country and found this virgin and put her in the bed with the with King David. And the next morning she woke up, she had not been touched. Everybody said the king is dead. <laughs> King is dead. <laughs> Listen to me. He put this beautiful woman in and she slept next to him all night long and all day he wanted her with some body heat. Because <laughs> all he wanted was some body heat because in those palaces they, 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 they got draft and they're full of moisture and they're cold at night. He didn't want no loving, all he wanted was some hugging. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be rich. <laughs> I want to be rich. Ask Job about being rich. The Bible said that all the things that Job had said he lost them all. But that was fine until his health started to fail. When his health started to fail, the things got catawampus there. He did. He started to think about. Well, all the money and stuff I got, it don't mean a thing. What I'm concerned about now is getting my health back together. Because I want to be rich. Solomon said that vanity, vanity, vanity. Vanity means it's all about me. I ain't thinking about nobody else. It's all about me. And Solomon said, I am already rich. He said, but he started to think about being rich and being poor. And he said, you know something? He said, the rich man go the same way as the food. Hmm. I want to be rich or I want to be a fool. But it doesn't matter how however rich I am, I'm still going to go to ways and food because we're all going down to the grave. And, and, and he started to think about that. He said, now I'm going to die rich. I'm going to die rich. And somebody's going to take over all the things that I worked hard for and not know how I got it. So they don't have the same attachment as I had. Because I had to work hard for what I got. All they do is walk in and say, I'm his son, I'm his daughter, I'm his mother, I'm his father. And they, and they, they get the chance to take over all my worldly values that I worked hard for. All because I want to be rich. Paul thought that he was rich until God put that stake in his side. Paul thought he was a man about town, one of my boasting about who, who he belonged to and what he was and how, how, how he could see the future <coughs> just because he was a follower of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But God put a stake in the side and said, son, so you still got a lot a long ways to go, but there's still a lot to that you don't know. <clears throat> so here's a reminder of that you don't know at all. And when you wake up in the morning, you got this stake in your side and let you know that who I am. I want to be rich. <clears throat> I want to be rich because rich is better than being poor. Or is it? I'm not a rich man. But I'm, 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 but I'm not a poor man. 
but being rich don't mean you get to have it your way all the time. Mm -hmm. Being rich means that you have to compromise. How much are you willing to compromise for? <laughs> How much are you willing to give of yourself to become rich? Mm -hmm. Mike Murdoch said, he said, all my friends gave me all this inside the trailer's information as how to invest my money and become filthy rich overnight because I got the inside scoop on what to put my money in. He said he took all this advice that everybody with his inside of trading, put his money in the product, and the product failed. Wow. He said, but I had a friend of mine who was struggling. His church was struggling. I went and preached at his church and donated my salary that they were going to pay me to the church. He said a couple weeks later, I was walking out of a pool pit and I stepped down. The guy walked up to me and he said, you Mike Murdoch, aren't you? He said, something told me to give this to you. And he gave him a check. You see, he invested his money in the Lord. And God paid him back, and now he can go home and sleep because nobody knows he got the check. Nobody's going to be kicking his door in and see if he's selling dope or anything before he can, because he has means. Because the Bible says that it is the Lord that makes it rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. The world makes it rich. The world won't enter on his money. Um, I, ain't, I ain't talking about no pay me later. That's what they get right now. Uh, you think I'm lying? Go to those dollar loan companies. <laughs> want their money right now. So if you want to be rich, make sure you want to be rich in the Lord. And then when, you, when you're rich in the Lord, you can ask God for whatever you want in, in, in being rich in the Lord. That's why he left it open. He said that it is the Lord that make it rich. Rich in whatever you put on the end of there. Rich in health. Rich in children. Rich in money, if that's what you want. But if God gives you money, he has no sorrow to it. But think about that. He left it open. I read in you, in this book, that Jesus, the son of the living God, Say that you can have whatever you want if you accept me as the son of the living God. I read in you in this book that if God sent his son to die for us. He died on the old rugged cross. But he came down and went down before he could come up and go up. Oh. I'm, I'm going to say that again. That made me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> see, he, he came, see, while everybody thought he was hanging on that cross, they took him down and they put him in a barber tomb. And, they, and they, everybody thinks that he laid there, but he didn't lay there. He got up and he went down and talked to the old saints who had already gone before him. Then he came back up so that he could go up. Mm -hmm. I read in you in this book that, that Jesus, the Son of the Living God, interceded for us so that we could have a right to the tree of life. I read in you in this book. Sometimes it was in the black, and sometimes it was in the red. That Jesus, the Son of the Living God, he rose after three days. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father, telling the Father to say that if they ask you in my name, you can tell them, I want to be rich. Amen. I want to be rich in health. Amen. I can live without the money. Right. Right. Can't live without the health. I thank God every day because he picked me up. That's right. When I was laying down, not sitting down, mm -hmm. laying down. Yep. Picked me up. That's why I know he lives. That's, right. That's why I know that I'm 
filthy rich. Amen. Oh. And hell, I got children, I got grandchildren, great grandchildren, and still got a wife who says she loves me. Now, we need to do that. Yeah. But in the meantime, I want to be rich. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Broadway Joe will perform. <laughs> 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 uh, I want to be rich. Okay, okay. Doors of the church home. If you want to be rich, first of all, you got to come to Jesus Christ. Amen. Second of all, you got to be obedient to Jesus Christ. All right, then. Third of all, you got to do what Jesus Christ wants you to do and quit saying, well, this time I'm doing this or this or that. Sometimes we put Jesus Christ on hold. Amen. We go do things and, well, I ain't got time. This is my time to do this or do that. But when you need Jesus Christ, when you need him to pay a bill, when you need him for help, when you need it for a situation, you, and, and, and you think he don't show up, oh me. But if you want to be rich, learn to know Jesus Christ. Learn to be healed. Humble yourself. Learn to realize it's not about you. But if you're serving Jesus Christ, you're already rich. Because he's going to pay you. And like I said last week, no charge. no charge. If you follow after Jesus Christ and quit trying to say, well, I don't do this, or I got to do this, or this or that, stop and ask you, what is it what you want me to do? I want you to clean up this mess. We asked him, clean up this mess. David says, search me, search my heart. And make me righteous. But we've been searching ourselves and making us unrighteous because we want to be selfish. And we serve an unselfish God. If you just deposit Him in your life, you have a rich balance. Joy, peace. You will have.